The interconnected world of the future will be the result of decisions we must make today. Everyone knows that government agencies are corrupt. It's common sense. It's clear that the system is broken and they're all crossing the line. Homeland Security, IRS, the USDA, the Treasury, the EPA, all of it BS. But rarely is it so blatant as it is with the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, because, well, very, very few people pay attention at all to them. Hardly any resistance was put up against net neutrality rules, and that was a fairly big media story. Almost no one said anything about the mergers between the giant telecoms and the general complete takeover of communications. There really wasn't any resistance to the 1996 Telecommunications Act, which opened up a whole can of worms, a whole set of Pandora's boxes with the NSA and everyone else. But now they've opened up the floodgates to massive corporate control over our lives, a total surveillance system on the part of government agencies and their contractors, and the very near blanketing of the entire population. Literally, of everyone in the world. Literally, of everyone in the world. Autonomous vehicles. Smart city energy grids, transportation networks, and water systems. Immersive education and entertainment will come from the cloud. The driving force of the 21st century will be powerful processing centralized in the cloud and wirelessly connected to thin clients. All of whom will be saturated with gigahertz signals literally everywhere they go on the planet and no one has permission. The United States will be the first country in the world to open up high band spectrum for 5G networks and applications. And that's damn important. And will generate tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. Big surprise, since this FCC chairman, now a former chairman who was appointed by Obama, big surprise since he used to be the president of two industry lobbyist organizations. Tom Wheeler was formerly president of the National Cable and Telecommunications Association and the CEO of the Cellular Telecom and Internet Association. Chairman Wheeler put the entire fixed and mobile broadband industry under a stricter regulatory regime. He has done so many things that have angered his former employees at, employers at the NCTA and CTIA have sued the FCC during his tenure. He explains his actions by saying, I used to be an advocate for corporate interests, and I hope I was a good one. But today, my client is the American people, and I want to be the best damn advocate for the American people that I can be. So he represents the industry. He got appointed to the position, and he just fox and hen house the whole thing. He just prostituted it all. So it's no wonder that he gives a no-holds-barred, full-force push to usher in 5G everywhere upon everyone, to swiftly and fully silence any and all dissenters, to ignore all the real questions, and to make sure that the safety data, to make sure that safety studies don't even happen. Unlike some countries, we do not believe that we should spend the next couple of years studying what 5G should be or how it should operate. We won't wait for the standards. Turning innovators loose is far preferable to expecting committees and regulators to define the future. And to make sure that questions about the biological effects of non-ionizing radiation are kept to an absolute minimum, off the table, out of the public eye, and nowhere near the FCC conversation. Um, how many people have to die from brain cancer before the federal government puts warning labels on cell phones? It's time to tell the American public the truth. Wireless causes cancer and killing hundreds and you don't care. Because they're going to rubber stamp this thing right through, no doubt about it. They already have. And what else would you expect from a lobbyist? The trade-off gives total power to these companies, to various government agencies, and to anyone in between who's interested in spying, hackers. It opens it up for everyone. And as technology races forward in what is already a world dominated by cell phones and people looking lost into little screens, it will now be completely saturated with high-speed connections. The next generation of wireless 
must be mobile fiber, 10 to 100 times faster than what we're used to today. We need to speed the deployment of 5G here on our shores. Yes, 5G will connect the internet of everything. If something can be connected, it will be connected in the 5G world. Of hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers, you can be sure of only one thing. The biggest Internet of Things application has yet Every single imagined. device and appliance and manufacturer is being fitted with a two-way communication device and it sends data back. Spying and surveillance is completely built in. It's a total default and it's the given. Location tracking, health data, audio and visual recordings, text, and everything else is going to be continually collected. And Tom Wheeler of the FCC freely admits it. He thinks it's great because it's going to make everything faster and it's going to make more money. We take our most significant step yet down the path to our 5G future. Others have covered it as well, but this is an issue that is not well known enough. 5G is a huge upgrade to the system. It is a complete overhaul compared with 3G and 4G. It's not only dramatically faster speeds, which is what they're going to play up to sell it to consumers and tell everyone what a great convenience and advancement that it is, but it is also a literal, complete infrastructure overhaul. Now, to make this work, five, the 5G build-out is going to be very infrastructure-intensive, requiring massive deployment of small cells. The big game-changer is that 5G will use much higher frequency bands than previously thought viable for mobile broadband and other applications. Such millimeter wave signals have physical properties that are both a limitation and a strength. They tend to travel best in narrow and straight lines, and they do not go through physical objects as well. This means that very narrow signals in an urban environment tend to bounce around buildings and other obstacles, making it difficult to connect to a moving point. But brilliant engineers have developed new antennas that can aim and amplify signals, coupled with sophisticating pro sophisticated processing that allows a moving device to pick up all of the signals that are bouncing around and create one coherent connection. They're going to put up boxes on telephone poles, or at least that's what the articles have said, and they're going to be on ground level sites and everywhere else, and it will completely replace the now obsolete cell towers that you've seen around and you've got used to seeing. Those are obsolete. These are coming in very quickly. The cell phone and wireless companies are spending billions of dollars. They're racing the complete installation of the system by 2020, and that's now only three years away. Verizon and AT&T tell us they'll begin deploying 5G trials in 2017. The first commercial deployments they're talking about are expected in 2020. They're fueling money into cities and private owners where the towers will be installed. They're paying them off and they're moving f so fast that there's going to be very few places that are free at all anymore. I don't want to add paranoia, I don't want to make people fearful, but basically, where can you run from this? Once the system is fully launched and up, it's, it's going to be just like the Terminator Genesis system. It, it's going to be the rise of AI, and it's going to be like there's no looking back. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole providence of urban areas. The 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. We are the pioneers of a new spectrum frontier. No one gave permission for this because most people don't fully understand what's happening or why it matters. They're going to click on little agreements on their cell phone for the different sites they visit, and they're going to have no idea how much is going to be taken from that. But it's clear that this is not a good bargain, and people need to be warned. They should try to oppose this in their local cities and where they can and try to challenge these companies because they don't want to face resistance and they don't want a population that knows about the dangers and the risks of this technology. 
but the capabilities of this technology are absolutely unfathomable. I can't cover it all in this video. Go look it up for yourself. Now, I'm not going to get into Dr. Ross a day of UCLA right now, do a more in-depth video later on, or a lot of the other brain doctors and neurological researchers, but Ross a day was working with the CIA and exchanging technology and study data with the Russians uh, back in the 60s and 70s and even further back, and he figured out scientifically, demonstratively, how non-ionizing radiation at various specific frequencies from microwaves or from other signals, how they could alter human and animal behavior. For instance, a simple 10 hertz wave could put someone into a stupor within a couple of minutes using neuroelectric devices that they developed uh, in, by the 70s. They could put individuals or entire towns to sleep on command. They can aggravate people. They can alter their sexual preferences. They could delete their memories. They could turn on desire. They could turn on repulsion. And they could otherwise hijack someone's spontaneous and natural behavior. They could literally hijack your nervous system and your brain. And that was 30 or 40 years ago. Now things are very advanced, they're very precise, and they're very far along. There's discussions now at the Davos World Economic Forum that have broached the topic of mind reading and literal mind control. And these devices, the capability to do it, is built into everything. Every handheld unit, every laptop, mobile device that everyone's carrying around. And once things are fast enough with 5G, <laughs> all bets are off. The constant, ubiquitous connection with these next-generation 5G towers. I mean, what else can you say? You either see it or you don't. But I'm not cool with that.